Welcome back to the Basic Beginners Free CAD course. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about subtractive and additive primitives in FreeCAD. Primitives are used in both 2D and 3D. These are basic shapes like cubes, cylinders, spheres, cones, etc. So let's take a look at our flow chart. We can first check to see if our shape is a primitive by looking at the individual shapes that are on offer. If it's easier to use one of these shapes, then we can, and this could simplify our workflow. The part design allows you to work with these shapes through either additive or subtractive operations. The primitives can be found in the toolbar, grouped together under the additive and subtractive forms. They can simplify your workflow and lead to a quicker result than alternative methods. Let's explain this by modeling the following subject, a spherical color. Remember from our theory lessons that we can simplify subjects by first removing any fillets or surface detail. Then we can identify the necessary operations to create its features. In this case, it's a dome sitting on top of a curved base. When viewed from the sides, the profiles don't match. They're a different shape. So this rules out a single revolve. By taking the approach of dividing the subject into layers of features, we can see that it consists of a curved base and a spherical dome. The base is a simple extrusion or a pad. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So we're going to tackle the base first. To do that, I'm in the part design and I've created a new document. Let's first create the body and the sketch. We're looking along the XZ plane. So the base consists of two arcs with rounded corners. Now we could use the arcs or we could use the sketch feature of this slot. If I drop this down inside, we see create an arc slot. Let's select that. So first of all, we're going to be asked for the center point. So I'm going to place the center point upon this line here, this vertical axis. If I look over to the left, we got the constraints. If I drop this down, we've got the auto constraints on and the auto remove constraints. Let's just click on the scroll bar just to get rid of it. So let's first connect across this vertical axis so you can see the constraints are kicking in. Click once, we get our center point. So we need to find where we're going to start the arc. So I want to start it about here. So after clicking once, I can bring the arc up and over and click again. Now I can control the width of the arc or the width of the slot. Click once and we get our arc. That's right click to cancel the tool and that's control the size of this arc. So I'm going to take this point and the horizontal axis, use the Quinston constraint, and the same for this point and this one, Winston constraint again, and now I can control the arc and also its width. So first of all, I'm going to take this point and this one and set some width against here using the dimensioning tool. And we get our dimension of 72. I'm going to set this to 100 and right click to cancel the tool. So we can set the radius of this arc now. Let's zoom out a bit and decide what it's going to look like. So I want something like, say about like this. Once I'm happy with this, I can set a radius. Clicking on the arc, I can use the dimensioning tool again. This will set me the radius here. Click once and let's set this to 100. Right click to cancel the tool. We can see we've got the thickness of this arc that we have to control. Let's control that by one of these arcs. And again, using the dimensioning tool, and we can set a radius. I'm going to set the radius to two millimeters and hit enter. So now we have our slot or our curve base. So this is the profile we're going to extrude. Let's hit close. Well, when I say extrude, it will be a pad in the part design. So we need to select the sketch if it's not already selected and then hit the operation to pad. 
We're going to set the length and we'll set this to 100 millimeters and hit enter. Tackling the next feature, the dome, our initial force might be to match the bottom of the dome to the curvature of the base, but that will be incorrect. It's easier to intercept the dome through the base and then clean up the overhang afterwards. So we have our curved base and now we need to add the dome. For this, we're going to use the primitive tools. Let's come up and look at view and toggle the axis cross. If we look, we can see the axis is here. So it's around this side. It's not centered in the object because we padded this way. We could do a symmetrical pad. If I double click on the pad and use symmetrical to plane, this will be symmetrical to the plane that it's placed upon and hit OK. And if we flip this over the other side, we can see that the axis cross is in the middle now. But I'm just going to use this with the symmetrical to plane turned off. And there's a reason for this to show the attachment mode. So we're going to use an additive primitive. Now they sit here. Or in part design, create an additive primitive and we want the additive sphere. Let's click that. It will be placed at the point of origin. So we can see the point of origins here. So remember when we went symmetrical to plane, that point will be in the center where we would want it. So this is the reason why I've done this. We can change the location that's here in a moment. First of all, that sets some radius, 25 millimeters. When we click off, we see the sphere's changed. We may change the size of this in a moment. I'm going to position this sphere now. To do that, we're going to be using the attachment mode. We can see it's already saying it's let in. Let's zoom in. I'm going to pick my first reference, which is going to be this point here. So let's zoom into this point. This vertex will select it. That's the center of the sphere at the moment. Reference two. Let's click that, so it's saying select in. Let's come over to the other side and zoom in and select that vertex. This is now in the center, but we need to change the placement this way. So we need to raise it up. First of all, come up to the left-hand side and select inertia CS. You can see it's highlighted in bold anyway, and that will be the one that is recommended. Now we need to change the position on one of the axes. So we want in the X, in the Y, or in the Z direction. If I change the Z, you can see it's going this way, which is not the Z direction here. This is due to the local and global coordinate system. So this is the global coordinate system, and the local coordinate system is connected to the object itself. So I'm going to take that off and change the Y axis. So let's bring this up. So at the moment I'm clicking, I've got around about seven millimeters there. And I'm looking at this and it's still a sphere, but we're going to bring this all the way up to about 10 millimeters. So now we've got the sphere, we need to make this into a dome. So we have a number of options here. We could set what we've got at the moment and then remove this part or we could actually make this into a dome. So if we come up to the top here, we've got the radius, which we changed. And I'm going to give this a bit more, say around about 40. So we've got that there. And then we've got this U and V parameters. So if I take the U and change it, to go down, you see part of the sphere is starting to be removed. So let's change this one to 180 degrees. So the bottom of the sphere now has been removed, but we have to be careful because you can see that we've got this space in here. So depending if we have a dome and we have the arc and they connect up together, so we don't have this space in here. So if this arc wasn't as curved as this, then we could pick the dome. But if we've got something like this, then I would pick the full sphere and then remove the material from within here. 
Either way, we may have to remove some material. Another option is to drop the dome down. So let's come down to here and decrease the Y direction. And we'll place the dome and set it inside. So we still need to remove this part here though. And we'll clean this off with a pocket in a later operation. That's come up and hit OK. So we've created our solid object. Let's get rid of this message by clicking on it. And we can now clear out this part here. To clean up the overhang, we need to subtract the excess area. Looking at it from the side, we can see that is a simple shape. We can create a sketch by referencing these edges. Using a subtractive operation such as a pocket, we remove the volume in the shape of the overhang. The process eliminates that excess material and refines the shape. I'm going to attach the sketch on this face. So we're using the base side to attach a sketch on there. Now look what's happened. We've got the Y axis running out this way and the X axis running this way. Just be wary of that because it can be quite confusing when we look at a cube in the same rear and it's running along the vertical. So we're going to use the import geometry tool, this one here. We'll right click and create external geometry. By pulling in this edge here, we can see this arc that runs along here. By pulling that one in, we get the arc and we get the two points, one point here and one point here. I could remove the shape from in here, but I'm going to do it this way because it's a lot easier. And if we drop this dome down further, then the overhang will still be removed. Let's come up and pick the crate line. Come in, hover over this point, coincident to that point, and create a line coincident to the opposite point. It's really constrained because this is fixed geometry. Next, we need an arc. So using the create arc by three points, we'll hover over this point and do the same for down the bottom. This point here, connect up to those. Don't create an arc that's tangent to here because it can cause problems. We're just going to drop it here to start with. So we've got our arc, right click to cancel the tool. And what we'll do is use the equality constraint, select that, select the arc what we've just dropped, and then select the imported arc and make those two equal. So now what we've done is created a sketch that sits in that space. So if I close that now, we have the sketch here. And I can take that sketch and use a pocket to remove the material. And if I increase the length here, you can see what happens. So keep an eye on the screen and you start to see that material being removed. We don't have to set a length. We can just go to the dimension at the top where it says type dimension at the moment, drop it down and go through all. So the excess material is being removed and we can hit OK. Once we've got our shape, we still need to create that void within the dome and provide an exit through the base. We can accomplish this task in a single step. The subtractive operation we will use is the subtractive primitive, the sphere. We now have our walled dome with an exit. This is a full solid. It hasn't got a void within. And also we need to punch through the back here as well, through the base. We're going to use another primitive. Instead of using the additive primitive, We'll come over and we'll use the subtractive sphere. So that sphere, it's added to the point of origin again. So we need to do the same, reference the same points. So first, let's have a look at the radius. And that's set this to 40 millimeters. Click off and we've got the sphere there. And that's reduce this down, that's say 35. And this will be removed from this sphere here. Look down, we're looking for the reference, the attachment mode, reference one, select in, and we select the same point. So this point here, reference two is saying selecting now, 
and we'll select the other point, this one in here. Now, the C is gone. That's because we haven't got the inertia C has selected. Let's click that. And we can see the sphere is underneath. This time, we're not going to make this into a dome. We're just going to keep it as is. So we can see what's going to be removed. If I hit OK now, the sphere has been removed from that center there. This may be a bit too thick. And we can see that by clicking on the body, coming into the view, and looking at the transparency. Let's set this to something like 80. So we can see that sphere in there. We can see what's been removed inside. So we need to come into the sphere, let's double click it and make some adjustments. Let's come down and look at the adjustments in here. So we've got direction on the Y. So that's increased this. We've moved that up by five. And that's come up and hit OK. So now we've got the correct clearance across there. And we can adjust that by double clicking on the sphere and setting the radius in here. Or if we cancel that and click on the sphere once and look on the data tab, we can see the radius in here. So I can set this, say, 38. We've got a warning message, which we would just click on to get rid of. And you can see we've created that void in there. We've come out the back and we've got the correct size wall in here into the void in the sphere. I'm going to click on the body, go back to the view and set the transparency back to zero and hit enter. Now we've got our model, we can add some finishing. So that's click on this edge here. See that there? You can see we've got some additional edges here, but if we click on this circle edge and come up and add the fillet, we can increase the fillet to resolve that edge. And also I want to do the same one here. That's add a fillet there. Select, click the edge, click preview, and we've got the fillet on both sides. Let's hit OK. And now we've finished our model using both a pad and additive and subtractive primitives. In our next video, we'll tackle the light housing that we talked about in the previous video. And we'll learn how to make a more complex object by following the exercise and the technical drawing. So I hope you're enjoying this course and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.